In the previous section of the course, we combined data from multiple sources. In this section, we are going to analyze alternative data sets. To start, in this first segment, we will define an alternative data set. In this exercise, we are going to use the two-day scenario underscore start workbook. I have already opened that workbook and saved it under the name of two-day scenario. To begin, on the data tab, in the data tools group, we click what if analysis, and then in the list, click scenario manager. The scenario manager dialog box opens. Now to create our scenario, we click add to display the add scenario dialog box. And in the scenario name field, type today increase. Now at the right edge of the changing cells field, click the collapse dialog button. And then in the worksheet, click cell C5. Then in the add scenario dialog box, click the expand dialog button. We're done specifying the cells we want to use in the scenario, so we can click OK. And when we do, Excel displays the scenario values dialog box. In the value field, type 13.2 and then click OK. When we click OK, Excel closes the dialog box and redisplays the scenario manager dialog box. If necessary, drag the scenario dialog box so it no longer covers the table. And then in the scenario manager dialog box, click show. Excel applies the scenario, changing the value in cell C5 to 13.2, or $13.20, which in turn increases the value in cell E8 to $747,450,000. Now in the scenario dialog box, click close. And on the quick access toolbar, click the undo button. Clicking undo removes your change, but the scenario is still in Excel's memory. In this segment of the course, we defined an alternative data set. In the next segment, we are going to define multiple alternative data sets. In the previous segment of the course, we defined an alternative data set. In this segment, we are going to define multiple alternative data sets. In this exercise, we're going to use the multiple scenarios underscore start workbook. I have already opened that workbook and saved it under the name of multiple scenarios. To start on the data tab, in the data tools group, click what if analysis, and then in the list, click Scenario Manager. When we do, the Scenario Manager dialog box appears. Click Add, which displays the Add Scenario dialog box. And then in the Scenario Name field, type 3 Day Increase. At the right edge of the Changing Cells field, click the Collapse dialog button. And then in the worksheet, click cell C4. And then, in the Add Scenario dialog box, click the Expand dialog button to restore the Edit Scenario dialog box to its original state. Click OK. When you do, Excel displays the Scenario Values dialog box. In the Value field, type 11.5, and then click OK. The Scenario Values dialog box closes, and the Scenario Manager dialog box is displayed again. Click Add. The Add Scenario dialog box opens. And now, in the Scenario Name field, type Ground and Overnight Increase. At the right edge of the Changing Cells field, click the Collapse dialog box button. Now click cell C3. Hold down the control key and click cell C6. 
Then click the Expand Dialog button again. And the cells C3 and C6 appear in the Changing Cells field. Click OK. And Excel displays the Scenario Values dialog box, into which you can enter new values for cells C3 and C6. In the C3 field, type 10.15. And in the C6 field, type 18.5. Click OK. And Excel displays the scenarios in the Scenario Manager dialog box. Now we click Summary, which displays the Scenario Summary dialog box. Verify that the Scenario Summary option is selected and that cell E8 appears in the Result Sales box. Click OK to have Excel create a scenario summary worksheet. In this segment, we defined multiple alternative data sets. In the next segment, we are going to vary data to get a desired result by using GoalSeek. In the previous segment of the course, we defined multiple alternative data sets. In this segment, we are going to vary data to get a desired result by using GoalSeek. In this exercise, we are going to use the target values underscore start workbook. I already opened that workbook and saved it under the new name of target values. To start, on the data tab, in the data tools group, we click the what if analysis button and then click GoalSeek. In the Goal Seek dialog box, in the Set Cell field, type D4. Then in the Two Value field, type 0 0.4. And then in the By Changing Cell field, type D3. So in other words, what we have done is tell Excel to change the value in cell D4, which is here, to 0.4, or 40%. It is to do that by changing the value in cell D3 so that this value represents 40% of the total. If you look in the formulas in cells C4 through F4, you'll see how Excel calculates this percentage. It is the value above it, in this case D3, divided by the total. Now that we have those arguments in place, we can click OK. And Excel indicates that it found a solution. Target value of 0 0.4, 40%, and you can see that the transportation costs have gone down from 35 million to 29 million. Now click Cancel to close the Goal Seek Status dialog box without saving your results. When you do, Excel reverts the worksheet back to its original state. In this segment, we varied our data to get a desired result by using Goal Seek. In the next segment, we are going to find optimal solutions by using Solver. In the previous segment, we varied our data to get a desired result by using GoalSeek. In this segment, we are going to find optimal solutions by using Solver. You can find Solver at the right end of the Data tab on the ribbon in the Analysis group. If you don't see the Analysis group or Solver on your system, then you might have to add it. Solver is a free add-in that comes with Excel 2010 you can add it by clicking the File tab, clicking Options, and then in the Excel Options dialog box, clicking Add-ins. Then down at the bottom of this page of the dialog box, make sure that Excel Add-ins is selected from the Manage list, and then click Go. When you do, Excel displays the Add-ins dialog box. Make sure that the Solver Add-in box is checked, and then click OK. I already have Solver installed on the system, so instead of clicking OK, I will click Cancel.
In this exercise, we're going to use the add by underscore start workbook. I've already opened that workbook and saved it under the name of add by. Once in this workbook, we click solver to display the solver parameters dialog box. With the cursor in the set objective field, click the collapse dialog box button and then click cell G9 and click the expand dialog box button. This action indicates that we want to change the value in cell G9. Now if necessary, select the max option button. That means that we want to maximize the value in cell G9. Now click in the by changing variable sales field and then click the collapse dialog button and select cells E5 through E8 and click the expand dialog button. This choice indicates that we want Excel to change the values in cells E5 through E8 to maximize the value found in G9. And in this case, the values E5 through E8 contain the number of ads to be bought from four different magazines. Now we can start adding our constraints. To do that, we click the Add button. And then in the Add Constraint dialog box, with the cursor flashing in the Cell Reference field, select cells E5 through E8 so that the references appear in the Cell Reference field. Now in the Operator list, which is in the middle, we click INT which stands for integer. In other words, we want the values in cells E5 through E8 to be integers as opposed to decimal values. With those selections in place, we can now click Add. That adds the constraint and leaves the Add Constraint dialog box open. Now we click cell F9. That's the total cost of all the advertisements then click in the constraint box and click cell G11. This constraint indicates that we want to spend no more than three million dollars on ads. Click the add button and we can add our new constraint. With the cursor flashing in the cell reference field click cell G9. In the operator list click greater than or equal to. And then with the cursor flashing in the constraint field click cell G12. This constraint tells Excel that we want to have a minimum audience of 10 million viewers. In other words, if Excel can't find a solution where we spend less than $3 million on ads and get 10 million viewers, then it will say that it has not found a solution to the problem. With those choices in place, click Add. Now select cells E5 through E7. In the operator list, click greater than or equal to. Click in the constraint field if necessary. The cursor should be flashing there. And then click cell G13. This constraint indicates that we want to have at least eight ads in each of the first three magazines, the ones represented in cells E5 through E7. Click add to add the constraint. Now we click cell E8. And then in the operator list, click greater than or equal to. And then in the constraint field, with the cursor flashing in the constraint field, click cell G14. This constraint means that we will purchase at least 10 ads in the fourth magazine. Click add. Then select cells E5 through E8. Leave the operator as less than or equal to. And then click in the constraint field and click cell G15. This constraint indicates that we want the numbers in cells E5 through E8, that is the number of ads that we purchase in those four magazines, to be no more than the value that is in G15 and that is 20. Click OK. 
and Excel closes the Add Constraint dialog box. Now one last thing that we need to do is change one option so that Excel does not ignore this integer constraint. To do that, in the Solver Parameters dialog box, we click the Options button, and then clear the Ignore Integer Constraints checkbox, and click OK. Now we're back in the Solver Parameters dialog box, and we can click the Solve button. And I'll move the results out of the way. Solver indicates that it has found a solution, and we can either keep the solution by leaving this radio button selected, or we can restore the original values. Clicking Cancel would do the same thing as restoring the original values. However, we do want to keep the results, so we will click OK. In this segment, we found an optimal solution by using Solver. In the next segment, which is the last segment of the section on analyzing alternative data sets, we will analyze data by using descriptive statistics. In the previous segment, I showed you how to find optimal solutions by using Solver. In this segment, which is the last segment of this section, we will analyze data by using descriptive statistics. In this exercise, we are going to use the driver sort times underscore start workbook. I have already opened that workbook and saved it under the new name of driver sort times. To begin, on the data tab, click data analysis. If you don't see data analysis on the ribbon, on the data tab, you might need to install the analysis tool pack add-in. To do that, click the file tab, and then click options. Then in the Excel options dialog box, click add-ins. And at the bottom of the dialog box, make sure that Excel add-ins is selected from the manage list, and then click go. From the list of available add-ins, make sure that the Analysis Tool Pack item is checked. You can then click OK to install the add-in, although I already have it installed, so I'm going to click Cancel. But once you see Data Analysis on your Data tab, click the Data Analysis button, and then in the Analysis Tools list, click Descriptive Statistics, and click OK. Now make sure that the cursor is flashing in the input range field, and then select cells C3 through C17. Then check the Summary Statistics checkbox, and click OK. You should now resize the column by dragging the right column header of column A so that you can see the data that has been added to your new worksheet. Excel has calculated the mean, which is the average, the standard error, and other statistics for your data. In this segment, we analyze data by using descriptive statistics. This is the last segment of Section 8, Analyzing Alternative Data Sets. In the next section, we are going to create dynamic worksheets by using pivot tables.